Disclaimer. These are my opinions. They're formulated over general perusing of comics and researching that has happened over the last year. If you think I have erred in any way, shape, or form, leave a comment down below and we'll have a further conversation. Okay? Okay. Hey there! Today, I'm here to talk to you about Cindy Moon and Amadeus Cho and why they're so important to Asian American representation in Marvel Comics. I would totally include Kamala Khan in this video, but I think it's better if I leave her for another video. So more on that a little bit later. I found that Marvel has a really interesting history with Asian and Asian American representation. And for sure, Marvel is not shy on perpetuating stereotypes in comics. Like... Really racist. Or confusing. <laughs> in Marvel's current run of comics, there are three Asian Americans with their very own titles. They are Cindy Moon, who is shiny. Cindy Moon. Amadeus Cho and Kamala Khan. Yes. I will first talk to you about Silk and a little bit of backstory on her. Silk, aka Cindy Moon, was bitten by the same radioactive spider as Peter Parker. And unlike Peter, she was locked in a bunker for a decade. And during that decade, her family seems to have disappeared without a trace. She was discovered by Peter and he freed her, and now she is trying to adjust to her life. Um, she is using her internship at the Fact Channel to try to find her family, while also kicking butt as Silk and dealing with the mental issues that she has gained from being in the bunker for so long. If I were reading the original Sin event during its run, I don't think I would pick up Silk's standalone title. I'm not a huge fan of how, in Original Sin, she is drawn over-sexualized. Then, further down the line in the story, when she was with Peter Parker, or at least when she was near Peter Parker, she, her and Peter's spider senses took over, and they really couldn't keep their hands off each other. Really? <laughs> I'm not saying that women who want sex are bad. I think that it makes her being in this universe more problematic and I think it perpetuates female Asian Americans to be seen as just sex objects and really that's that's not okay. You just have to love those Asian fetishists. Even though her current costume in this run is still a bodysuit, I still really like it better than the one we were introduced with. While researching Cindy Moon, I keep finding people really... I keep finding threads of people questioning what her race is. Some have derived it is Korean because of her last name. Some have gone as far as speculating she is Vietnamese or Chinese. This is a very interesting like, topic to talk about in this series because right now Marvel has not stated her race. There's a partial conflict in me wanting to know what, what her race is. On one hand, it would be cool to know. And I think as, uh, I think from a storytelling perspective, it would be really interesting to see how perhaps Cindy's family and the culture that she grew up with really has affected her now that she is being a superhero. On the other hand, with Cindy, if we do end up finding out what her race is, I think it'll further categorize her. And with that, what will we do as an audience? Um, what will the writers do for her? Um, will, will we throw stereotypes onto her that we haven't already because she looks a certain way? Uh, yes, she has the looks of a person who hails from East Asia, but right now, from what I'm reading within the story, 
it doesn't seem like her Asian American heritage is at the forefront of her story. It's just taking a backseat towards her trying to find her family and for her to try to assimilate back into society since, yes, she was stuck in that bunker. On top of all of this, I really appreciate that we see Cindy as a woman who interns slash freelances as a journalist for a top media company. Uh, she reflects a part of me today that I wish I saw when I was younger, when I was struggling to justify my wants for a future career. She breaks the stereotype that Asian Americans train their entire lives to work in medicine or law. Like, no, not every single one of us wants to work in those two fields. There are a lot more jobs, there are a lot more creative people than you think. Okay. Moving on, we're going to be talking about da 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 Amadeus Cho. When I heard the announcement that Amadeus Cho was going to be the new Hulk, I was actually really shocked. I know that this announcement to some longtime readers of the Hulk wasn't that shocking, but to me, I haven't been reading comics for very long. One year, that doesn't seem like a long time to be reading comics at all. But I didn't recognize the name and I didn't realize how, how big this is. A little bit of a backstory on Amadeus. He's been around in the Marvel Universe for about 10 years. 10 years next month, actually. Created by Greg Pak and Takashi Miyazawa, Cho is in the top 10 smartest people in the world. Um, he's either 7 or 8, depending on who you ask. And he's had team-ups with Bruce Banner and Hercules, but he's always seemed to have been a sidekick. In this series, we're just not 100% sure how he became the totally awesome Hulk yet. And as the series progresses, I hope that we definitely see and see that this is addressed. I can't say that I was a huge fan of the Hulk before picking up this title, but I can say that I realized how important this series is to a lot of Asian American men. Um, as I said earlier, most of the representation of Asian and Asian Americans in comics looks like... and these were awful. These were incredibly awful. And definitely, definitely offensive. Representation in comics has always been important, not only to Asian Americans, but anyone who isn't a white male. Comics have always been dominated by white men. Really. Uh, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, white men, who are really muscular and I, I don't really think that's how the real world looks like. Sorry to break it to some people, but not everyone in this world is white. So when the entertainment industry doesn't reflect this, this affects future generations greatly. Like I said with Cindy, I wish I saw more Asian Americans, especially women, in careers that weren't related to medicine or law. I can't imagine seeing an Asian male Asian American male seeing representation as a bad guy who always gets defeated, sometimes a little too easily by the protagonist. With Amadeus as the totally awesome Hulk, it's a step in breaking those Asian male stereotypes in mainstream media. I understand that Amadeus Cho isn't the first Asian American superhero. There are so many more uh, Asians in the Marvel Universe and plenty more in the DC Universe that I definitely have not heard of yet. But I think that it's important to note that Amadeus is the Hulk. The Hulk is one of, one of the most commonly known superheroes in mainstream media. And I want to say that it's thanks to perhaps the MCU. The thing that drew me into this reading the series 
is the fact that unlike Bruce Banner, where the Hulk is a monster and is fueled by Bruce Banner's rage, Amadeus seems to be the polar opposite. And he kind of wants to be the Hulk. So one of the first images I saw of Amadeus is him surround in his lab coat, surrounded by radiated light from him. And he's smiling. Even on the cover, he's just like thumbs upping, <laughs> approving the message that this is this is the Hulk now. Like, yeah. Confidence. Confidence is there. When you're an Asian male in media, you typically see them as either a gangster or or a nerd, really. I think those are the two options that I, don't, I can think of right now. Um, the most popular one is the emasculated nerd who can never get the girl. Even though people like Bruce Lee pop up in film and other popular media, Bruce Lee still perpetuates an emasculated man. He is seen as asexual and he still doesn't get the girl at the end of the day. And he also does kung fu. I'm pretty sure not every Asian male knows kung fu or is asexual. That, that doesn't make sense. What complicates Amadeus for me is that he has the superpower of being really, really smart. The hyper mind. This kind of feels like a build off of the nerd stereotype, but at the same time, I find it really cool that he is smarter than Athena, the goddess of wisdom. Like, what? <laughs> Amadeus is now our new Hulk. He has the same characteristics as Banner, so we're not losing the old familiar Hulk. Amadeus just has a different personality than Bruce. So for those who complain or do not like it, he's essentially still the Hulk. Obviously, if this story progresses and Amadeus has no substance as a character, or he gains no character development for the rest of the series, I won't stick around as a reader. I totally trust the team working behind Totally Awesome Hulk, because Greg Pak, half of the team who created Amadeus, is continuing the story for this series. Greg Pak has worked on so many other Hulk titles, Somewhere it'll be here. And it feels right to have him continue uh, Amadeus' story. As an Asian American, I can really appreciate these beginnings of representation of more and more Asian Americans in comic books. I have a feeling that after the all new, all different event that's happening right now, people are going to take their names back. Maybe we'll see that Bruce comes back and he wants to be the Hulk again. I hope even after all new, all different ends, Marvel continues with this whole diversity thing that they're doing. And maybe create a brand new IP with an Asian American character with some kind of fantastic power that doesn't perpetuate stereotypes, you know, like a hyper mind or them knowing how to do kung fu. Just just you're getting there, Marvel. You're you're so close. Continue growing the diversity. Keep working at it because you'll bring in more readers that way. That's how I got brought into reading more comics. It's the fact that you have more representation of people like me. It's it's a step forward. You're getting there. I just want to see more. Uh, I can't wait to see what else you have in store. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me rant for a considerable amount of time. I know that this feels uh, all over the place or whatever, but I really do appreciate you sticking around, listening to me rant, and I don't know, how do you feel about Marvel's all new, all different uh, event, really? There's a lot of different feelings towards it. 
um, not just for Asian Americans, but for other beloved characters and what they're doing. So if you have any opinions and you want to share them, leave them somewhere down below. And let's start a conversation. All right. Bye.